Wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wake the dreamer, right? That oh. game also looks hella cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just watching. Oh, Atomic. Atomic Kirko. Hello. Um, wow. Speaking of underrepresented aesthetics, that reminded me of the Amiga a little bit. The Amiga? Yeah. That, that kind of that, uh, the out of this world vibe. Oh. Uh, you know, Sir Gallim actually makes a good point. I wanted to see gameplay. Um, I honestly less so. <laughs> uh, no, I, I agree. And I also disagree for completely different reasons that kind of usually conflict in gamer rhetoric, but uh, I think actually work together really well here um, because, I mean, ideally, if you're like in a dream-like sort of existence, you don't necessarily have all the control that you might want. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> the, the cutscenes, of course, themselves look really, really hot. And if you're spending your entire indie budget of zero dollars and zero cents on some awesome looking cutscenes, like can't necessarily fault you for that. If on top of that, you also uh, are just inspired by kind of like sword and sorcery or uh, mobile design to do some like, uh, it looked like there was kind of like that moving nubbin thing that you do on your handhelds. Um, and then a single interaction button. You've got that like minimalist design you're working with anyway. It's like, kudos to you for just putting it out there. Um, this looks amazing and it sounds amazing. And it just puts you in such a mood of like, I, I, I need this. Uh, yeah, that was hype. That was way hype. Um, thank you guys for enjoying that with me. I feel like I'm a ne I, don't, I need to honor you guys for that. Um, you got okay, any thoughts, got Austin? Next? Oh, you're already all right. You're already like, let's get going. I mean, that looks great, but we do got we got lots of games to play. <laughs> it's you know? true, we do have a lot of games to play. I'm still just like, whew, I need to take a take a little bit. Just next game's hashtag dungeon, and that's why I need to take a breath because hashtag dungeon by Oxy Ox Spring uh, is one of the games that we actually have a panel specifically for uh, because hashtag dungeon was based off of uh, the designer's dissertation research of uh, understanding hashtags and their use in um, internet architecture, online architecture. And so I've got an alpha gameplay video for Hashtag Dungeon, which if I'm understanding right, and this is from Greenlight, uh, you can go Greenlight Hashtag Dungeon right now, and you're probably going to want to in the next five minutes. we got a five-minute trailer. That makes Solon very happy. <laughs> and uh, Five minutes off. Huh? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, looks like Warp Tour is going to get off break soon, which is cool. Um, but yeah, let me hit you up with this trailer, because they, they'll explain it better than I can. Boom.
So that was hashtag dungeon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I actually, I, I uh, think I'm kind of uh, going with a lot of the things that I was reading in chat, and I wish I could uh, hype out people individually in chat, but chat's been moving quickly, and the trailer was long. I, don't, I shouldn't make excuses. I forgot. Let's be real. Um, hashtag dungeon. I really love what they're doing. And I think there's so much potential in there, so I kind of actually want to be a little more critical about um, how they're using the style of um, how they're using the style of the roguelike, uh, the modern contemporary roguelikes. Uh, what do we got? So many uh, Rogue Legacy, Binding of Isaac. Um, there was a little bit of um, Names escape me right now, um, but it uh, it obfuscates the more pertinent idea that these are generated based off of your hashtags, and I think that if it did a little more work, oh, Dark Souls, uh, that's what I I just saw the portal show up when it shows the names. It's like all right, you're you're pulling stuff from all these places. Cool. Um, I see a twin Rova boss just popped up, um, but I think it all kind of obfuscates from the bigger idea of the hashtags, and I'd like to see the hashtags more. Uh, put in there in in a in a bigger way, or more yeah, make it more kinda, blatant, right? I think the thing for me is is, is and I'm and I'm reflecting a lot of what a lot of people say are saying here in in this chat, which is purposes. just that it's it's hard to hashtags are if the hashtags are like building the dungeons, for example, it's kind of hard to see how how that process is working. And I mean, granted, yeah. it's just like you know, game architecture is not necessarily that that something that people are you know, it it might be a snooze fest for some people. But considering it's how this game is built, then it's yep. kind of important. Kind of like uh, what's the other contemporary uh, desktop dungeon? I think is the name of it, if I'm remembering right. Uh, but it uses the architecture of your hard drive for the uh, dungeons that it builds. Uh, so it's kind of the same idea. But I'm still super excited to see what their research was. And I want to know how they got to building their hashtag architecture design around this idea. Um, and that's going to be a panel, I think it, is it tomorrow? I don't, uh, I don't have the schedule right in front. Well, I, okay, you know what? I can just not be lazy and put the schedule right in front of me. Like a normal person. Um, but yeah, let me get that in front of me. I think it's Thursday, though. Um, Thursday in the morning, if I remember scheduling this right. Uh, 30 minutes left? Oh, oh boy. Then let's get to another game, because I've got... I'm not even halfway through this list, y'all. Uh, and I want to get to this one, because I'm really excited. This is Sparse Vector. He's a Seattle local. Uh, Sparse Vector makes a lot of really fun, uh, silly games. Um, he made that Oregon Trail adventure, like, uh, WarioWare kind of, like, micro-game game uh based on oregon trail but you'll you'll recognize it. if you've played that game you'll see it in the artist that, for this one um can you hit me up with the feed because this is actually not a video this is just go plague monkey go um you're an animal you're sick you should be locked in a cage but you're not go plague monkey go is a chaotic top-down 2d action creator uh action game from the creator of super amazing wagon adventure you control a monkey with highly fatal contagious disease who is accidentally let loose in a random generated city. Go kill, go in every building, kill everyone, don't let them stop you. And everyone tries to stop you. Um, so I've actually seen him stream this game uh, quite often on his channel, um, Sparse Vector. You can go find him on Twitter at Sparse Vector. And uh, basically you start here and you kind of wind your way up somewhere around here. Um, and you basically just go around wrecking the town. Um Meanwhile, Action News Lives gives the public a helpful idea of what is going on. Um, but I like their UI because it just has this flair that has adds nothing to the game itself. Um, but they add a filter to it where it's like, what are the eyes on the monkey right now? If you're outside, it's the Action News helicopter. If you're inside, it's security cameras. Um, and you are then just let loose. Can you guys hear me? Austin? I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just needed a quick check-in. <laughs> um, Sorry, I mean, I, I just try not to interrupt you. No, you're, you're right on. I just kind of got self-aware for a second. Um, overworld theme says hi. I like how it uses uh, looks like news footage. Yeah, and with it in motion, uh, which I'm surprised there's no video because he streams this often. Um, 
but it's also in development right now. So I can understand that you wouldn't want to show that off uh, too early or commit to any video. Devs things. Uh, we've got a panel that's about showing your game early and often. It's good for you, and it would help right now. Um, but chaotic, brutal, random, open world, quick permanent death. You kind of know what you're getting at here. The cool thing that these pictures really don't show is that you infect people by, uh, by plague. And so once you infect one person, uh, you can infect more people by them being in contact. So you actually just pick up bodies and throw them chaotically around. And that body hits other bodies that hit other bodies, and it just kind of cascades from there. Um, there's a lot of really fun, silly things happening here. Uh, you get power-ups along the way that uh, allow you to better evaluate your threats. Um, and basically, you just try to get your body count to go as high as possible. Uh, super violent. But you're a monkey, so who cares? Monkeys. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're the monkeys. Thanks, Roth. Uh, I'm actually not sure what engine he's using, Shinxi. Who made a monkeys joke? Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Yeah, old school right there. Hey, yo. I want to hit up Particle Mace. Particle Mace? Look at this gorgeous. Uh, AndyMakes.com backslash Particle Mace. Um, let me just hit this for you. It's in pre-alpha! You can buy it now on... Uh, is that Humble? Oh, that's itch.io. And Humble. That's all of them. And it was just green light. Holy crap! The news is just flying. There's some screenshots. No, don't look at those screenshots. Uh... Particle Mace. Hit me, Vimeo. So let's talk a little bit about part of my particle mace. What did you see, Austin? Before I just drop the news on you, what did you see? What, what news? Sorry, okay, Partic we're talking about particle mace. Particle mace. Uh, that is the game uh, with all of the little I things. See? I saw a weapon. I saw a game where you drag your weaponry behind you for the like most a part. Flail. And that's yeah, like and that flail. seems interesting. Yes. All about and that's physics and physics on top of physics. So bite me, E3. We have physics on top of physics. Um, got double physics. Yeah. Yo, dog. Like, uh, you've got the asteroids thing going, yeah, no problem. Then you've got trajectory physics going around your person that you're using to medieval flail into stuff. And then chaos happens. Because once you put physics on top of physics, you get physics squared, uh, which is only a step down from physics cubed, which is actually just uh, heaven and hell colliding, uh, literally. So that's a thing. Uh, but particle mace... Physics squared. Um, the thing about Particle Mace is that we are actually going to be hosting a... Uh, we haven't decided if it's just multiplayer or if it's a straight-up tournament, but we're going to be doing that live here. Uh, and that's going to be later in the week. Uh, do we have a date for that? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm, uh, particle Mace. 16th. Oh, right. All the, all the big multiplayer event is going to go on the 16th, so that's next week on Monday. Um... Anyone in Seattle could actually come to this. We could we could hook this up. Um, same with Tuesday. We have other events on the next Tuesday, too. Uh, but $5 for one hell of a game on andymakes.com backslash Particle Mace. Particle Mace looks so cool, and I am really, really excited to be able to play that. Uh, it's a game about trying not to die, but that's impossible. So existential. Yes. I wish I had more to say about it. <laughs> Um, we're actually going to have a little bit more about that, too, uh, on the same theme of existentialism. Why didn't I make an existentialism panel? 
That could have been so easy. Why don't you? Why doesn't Chad? Why don't why you can do this still? There's hey, plenty of time. It, it is not beyond games. the realm hit of up, possibility. Hit up, up Indy 3. We're going to crowdsource uh, that. Bloody! We're all going to die anyway, existential in the games. Oh, bloody's on your back. Okay, there you go. Um, that actually reminds me. There was someone else that was uh, crowdsourcing the Indy 3 guys, and we retweeted them on the Twitter. Um, what is that? At Project Indy 3. Um, that was looking for a writer. Yeah. Someone's looking for a writer, and it's a paid gig, and we want to get indies paid. We want to actually, like, mm-hmm. So uh, that's a huge deal, and thank you so much to who, uh, I don't have an actual title of who that was, but um, it's all there on the Twitter, so please, please look at it, and if you're interested, hit them up. Uh, they're crowdsourcing, so bombard them with hundreds of emails. They deserve it. <laughs> get paid, please. Um, so I've got another game here by Wimba Studios, and it's called The Island of Eternal Struggle. If you'd like to hit me up, sir. Thank you, Speaking God. of existentialism, I'm excited to see this. The Island of Eternal Struggle. The Island of Eternal Struggle is Wimba Studios' first full-length title. Yes. What is it? Oh, sorry. Uh, this game is currently in heavy development, but you can stay informed by keeping an eye on our blog and following us at Wimba Studios. I'm just here because I really like these GIFs. They're really adorable. The Island of Eternal Struggle follows the story of Ian, the first of any living being to escape an island deadlocked in war between the forces of good and evil. His flight begins a series of events that will change the world forever. Travel the world, meet up with friends, and fight ridiculous enemies in this intense RPG adventure. We've got features, which we're going to look at right here. I am firmly impressed by that game. Uh, way more than I even thought I would be. I you, like it. You saw that, Austin, right? Because yeah, I know uh, that this I is want, your actually, game. I want, I want, yeah, you know this is my game. Uh -huh. You know why? 
because FF8 is my game. And FF8 has a little timed thing where you can get your attack power nice and high if you press a button at the right time. And <laughs> you just if like you wanna make, if you wanna make if you wanna make your RPG battle mechanics a little more engaging, timed little button presses like that work really well. They've been working really well, for example, for Paper Mario for mm -hmm. a while now. They worked really well in FF8 and they look like a lot of fun here. It looks like it's expanded into an entire system mechanic. Like they like multiple they made every systems. attack Tifa's slots. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Multiple systems. It looked like there was not just that one bit, but there were multiple uh it was a really great exploration of how can we make rpg battle systems uh and it, and that and that running away boss i loved that shit where, that was you know, where you're cool. trying to like where you're trying to where you're trying to drag him into the into the spikes and stuff like that because i also uh i do miss a little bit of mm -hmm. the area of rpgs where there are lots of more mini games that give you more ways to engage with the world and its characters yeah. etc cetera, etc cetera. they had a troll uh two troll bosses one that used manic and the other that used depression <laughs> Yeah, Which that I was interesting. Was yeah. Very There's there was elegant. manic depression. There was also uh, an attack called Cherry Bomb, and yep. also an attack called Hammerfall. And I'm pretty sure those are all musical references of some sort. So yep. that's nice. There was also a Smash TV. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Smash TV, which I liked. Nice little dig in there. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things going on in that game that was all just very camp and fun. And I think that the protagonist literally has no face. If I saw that right. Uh, which is kind of, is yeah, kind that of funny. Was weird. So yeah, this is the RPG's RPG. Uh, if if I may be so bold to say, the Island of Eternal Struggle though by Wimba Studios has some really cool stuff underneath it. I just want to say we've gotten tons of great RPG submissions that we've already seen, and I'm excited for all of them. I I would agree. Uh, I I'm not even much of an RPG fan, but like the ways that these dig into. Uh, the multiple systems that you can have in RPGs actually is inspiring, uh, honestly. Like, this is the kind of stuff that we can still do with RPGs uh, that haven't necessarily not been explored, but just haven't been well explored in a kind of more mainstream gamer popular culture, which is kind of an oxymoron, uh, because there isn't a lot of gamer stuff that is mainstream. Um, but, like, yeah, no, that, that was cool stuff. Um, oh, uh, yeah, shoutouts. Uh, Fiora, Fiora says that Ib and Yume Niki were RPG Maker 2, uh, so it's To the Moon. Oh, which uh, Fiora also says. <laughs> just dropping all the RPG Maker games. I love those games. Um, there was another one that just came out that I can't remember the name to that's in the same style as uh, those kinds of things with RPG Maker. And I was going to do a thing with it. Now I totally forgot what the name of it is. Um, but yeah, also Zoe just kind of running chat right now. If y'all want to hang out with Zoe, this is actually just Zoe's chat room. Bless ya, bless ya. I've got a great game to show you guys. I don't mean to like veer off into a whole nother direction, but I have Glitch Hikers here that is ready to show you. If you didn't see this on... Oh, man. ...on um, Warp Panel. Warp Door, excuse me. If you didn't see this on Warp Door Panel... Um, Glitch Hikers is fabulous, and I'm just going to blow up your heads right now. If you don't mind, if you would be so kind. This is Radio 90, and you're listening to Night Drive. Let's go on a journey together. Look at the night sky. What do you see out there? Emptiness? Chaos? An uncaring void? Or do you see the stars? The art of the nebulae? The romance of distant galaxies? There are stars above you even in the day. And they are watching. Things can get a little strange when you're driving late at night. You cross into another space, the journey a liminal place, and you never know who you might meet along the way. Keep your eye on the road and have a lovely drive.
<laughs> Glitch hikers, y'all. Ah! I love Glitch it. hiker. <laughs> no more of these pre-rendered cutscenes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the, the indie people, they're starting to learn that to sell your game, you don't show your game. That's just advertising 101. You want to sell your sell art. the yeah. sizzle, not the steak. Yeah, sell the sizzle. <laughs> sell the straight up lie, not the steak. Um, what was uh, TJ reminded me of another game? Can you just shout it again? Okay, let me just look this up. So, um, oh, Zarathustra's production. Oh, uh, Zarathustra Productions. Uh, they just have they have a game, Zarathustra Productions, that is now twenty five percent off on Steam. And so that is is that for Indie three? Is that one yeah. of our submissions? All right. Uh, is that one of our submissions? Where does that come from? It's just on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> it's just on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That's retweeted on Twitter. Zarathustra Productions, twenty five percent off. Awesome. Awesome. I unfortunately only know their production company name. Um, but it sounds legit. It's a great name. <laughs> Just got to get Nietzsche in here. No biggie. Um, so, yeah. Hit me up with that. Glitch Hikers. Yeah, I, I want to... Uh, oh, this is Whispering Willows. Um, so, Glitch Hikers is basically... a. It's the story. It's the play of driving down a road. And the dream of picking up people on the side of the road. Uh, because we always... If you see someone on the side of the road, you always pass them by. And this is a game that explores, like, what could happen if you, know, you, you pick them up? What's the worst that could happen? And they explore the fun, surreal side of picking up people in a car. It's like, it's such a normal thing that it works so well with a surreal theme. Right? Indeed. You take normal stuff and you just tweak it until it doesn't even look normal anymore ever again and then you will play this game and then you will never be able to drive and see people on the side of the road and then you'll pick up people on the side of the road and then we solved hitchhiking uh i think i don't know seems legit Uncanny i don't know but we got a cool game out of it <laughs> i don't know but we got a cool game out of it uh, nah that's just my game saving the world shtick um Okay, hit me. I want to do this one also. We're nearing uh, time that we're going to go on break, but Whispering Willows is another game that we have on the list that does a very similar thing. Allow. Spring Willows is a horror puzzle game coming out for OUYA, PC, Mac, and Linux. You play as Elena, a young girl who has the unique ability to astral project herself into the spirit realm. After a mysterious disappearance, her father is pronounced dead. Elena goes to the last place he was seen, the Willows Mansion, but what she finds is not only surprising, but disturbing. All the residents of the mansion are dead, trapped as spirits inside its walls. As Elena searches through the mansion looking for her father, she unravels a very dark and horrifying history. Elena must find why these spirits are bound to this world and help them move on. Each ghost has their own story to tell, and helping them may just help you overcome obstacles of your own. We're really excited about Whispering Willows, and we hope that you are too. We recently entered the game, the Ouya Create Game Jam, and we've been working really closely with Ouya to bring the game to their console. We come to you, Kickstarter, because we want to make Whispering Willows the best game it can be. 
With extra funding, we can not only bring it to more platforms, but really give it the extra polish it needs to shine. If you, Austin, Austin, if you don't fund that cute boy, I am going to cry. He's actually already funded. <laughs> He's actually already funded, so. That's great. We did it. We funded all the cute boy devs. We definitely need Yay. more games that remind me of Clock Tower. I agree. That's a great comp, uh, that's a great idea. Whatever the word I was looking for was, it's gone now. Um, what the, oh, five minutes, five minutes. Um, okay, then I'm going to do another game here. Um, be, I'd love to talk more about Whispering Willows and all of its whispering, but it's already funded, so they don't get any talk about it anymore. We've got other things. Pizzarian, in the future, uh, hit me up with the website. In the future, in the year 2010, your mission to be the coolest pizza delivery service in the Jovian system, cut your way through traffic, escape the police, deliver uh, pizzas to the moons of Jupiter, then use the money you make to buy a new spaceship and upgrade your pizza shop. And you nice. watch out for competition. So here is the preview for Pizzarion. Okay, okay, the pizzerian at the end. Okay, seriously. That was like the icing on the cake. <laughs> love, love, love simulated speech. Oh, uh, I want to talk about something that inspired, that inspired an idea. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about pixel dynamics. Uh, pixels, obviously very abstract. Uh, it's a single unit of uh, picture. <laughs> um, but the magic of the pixel is not uh, that it is a single unit. It is what that pixel does. And the dynamics in Pizzarion, uh, the way that they move their pixels around the screen, is very, very uh, opposite of all of the designs that they have on the game itself. So, like, uh, you're driving down lanes. The lanes are straight lines. All of your opponents move in very, like, static things. But the things that you shoot go all over the place and they have arcs and they have beautiful motions um and it looks so cool it's so cool how those two things kind of come together they they uh clash those two forces of dynamics um and it's just pixels on the screen moving around it's just little ants on also to play with it's a game about delivering pizza it's also a game about delivering pizza and that makes me excited mm-hmm mm-hmm I thought it was cool. You got a. Uh, I feel sad for the computer that can never know what pizza tastes like. Oh, man, you're bringing me down at the end of this, yo. What is that? What is that? <laughs> bringing me way down. It's only 528. You know what? I'm going to show another one uh, because I'm not going to let James stop me. Um, because you got time for one more. I, I, I damned well do. Avoid droid. Which is a rhyme, first off, so it already wins ten out of ten of Indie Three Expo. Um, avoid droid fruits appear in sync with a drum beat. Let's do this. I'm I'm sold. And I can't maximize it on this screen, so I'm gonna. Sorry, <laughs> making giving James a workout. Okay. Uh, hit me now. 
Where's my sound? There we go. Avoid droid. For PS Vita. Cry. I'm gonna cry, you guys, because that was Robotron. And that makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goddamn Robotron. You guys make such amazing stuff, and I am floored by this. <laughs> I thought the music was really awesome. Just gonna say that. It was really what? The music was really great. Oh, I thought you were gonna say it was terrible. I oh, heard God, I didn't no. I didn't hear the last word, so I just kind of filled it in. I was like, he's probably saying it's terrible because that's what he usually says. I'm, I am not a hater. <laughs> no, no, no. It was really great. No, I I uh, think that's so real. Um, we need more Robotrons. Kermix is right. All the Robotrons. Oh goodness. Oh, uh, Lone Wolf Dawn. Seeing as uh, other people give suggestions for indie game video trailers. Here, I assume it's okay to mention about my Blade of Rage RPG I'm developing. Please do, Lone Wolf Den. Uh, usually, uh, chat rooms and streams are not a place to advertise your stuff. Uh, that's kind of a faux pas. But here, it's like, please do. Everyone, just start advertising your stuff. That's what this whole thing is about. I'm assuming that all 956 viewers are game developers. I would not. Well, why not? You all could Why be. not? Seems totally reasonable to me. Uh, it's like... It it's like being a, a comic book artist or a writer or a drinker or a breather or like like these are just things you could just do and be uh i had to uh tell ted who is doing a panel on um he's doing a panel on uh pacifism in games pacifism pacifist design so excited for that um and he's like well, we should actually get like actual devs on here. I'm like, you are developing pen and paper role playing games. What do you think you are? <laughs> and he, he was like, I'll go get my game design documents. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Um, do you want to kick me off? The voice of God is. I, I, me to I might go, go get my shepherd's crook or a gong. <laughs> oh, God. One of those. <laughs> Take him off the stage. Um, what's our plan? Hit me up, our, God. Here is our plan. Uh, wow. We are just finishing up the trailer showcase part two for today. We're going to take a one hour break to stop sitting in these chairs for a little while. We've been at this all day. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're going to like eat some dinner and stuff. I, Wait, we get dinner? You know, I tried to cook this sandwich for breakfast and it's still sitting here oh without a God. bite taken out of it. Wow. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, the energy drinks are just disappearing. So I should probably reverse that and drink less energy drinks and eat more solid food. Maybe we'll even drink yeah, some yeah. damn water. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, but we and then and that. then we have a special event, uh, which I'm not going to say too much about because I it's a secret. Ooh. It's a secret Ooh. from me. Uh, yeah, I want to before we go, uh, just thank everyone for. Uh, if you want to switch on my side. Uh, just thank all of you guys for being here. Uh, I'm super super happy we got Indy here. If you haven't watched Indy, hype up his stuff. Um, what was that? Don't forget that Warped Door is live. So oh, perfect. Warp Door is live on their side too. Um, yeah, we're Pacific time zone, so everything's in that time zone. I don't think that's on the things, is it? Oh, you can see it. Whoop, it's in the. Take a look in the lower right hand corner. There is a clock. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Secret to everybody? Nah, nah. Just to you guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Um, so, yes, uh, I want to just thank you guys for all being here and supporting indie games um, and all of the people who make indie stuff. Um, indie himself is here. Like, literally, the embodiment of indie is in the chat room. That's kind of cool. Quincy Bailov, hello. 
Uh, everyone give hype to Quincy Beolov because he's the unsung hero of this thing. Uh, if it was not for him single-handedly driving all of us yesterday, we would not be here in this room together. So wait, wait. mega hypes to him. Yes. The embodiment of India is in this room. You mean Eric Chahi is watching this and in the chat room right now? No, and Austin, you're a nerd. If you get that joke, I'm proud of you, but you should also get that joke. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a lot of show ahead of us. I'm trying to get through 150 uh, different games and show them all to you as much as I can. So I'm figuring, like, because I'm feeling great about all of this, I'm going to try to, like, minimize how often I let James get up and just keep going all night long. <laughs> I'm chained to the chair. Um, but we've only gotten through, like, 30 games or so. Um and they've all been amazing. It's not like it's not like it's been like you know what, this one, I'm not feeling it today. It's like every single one's like they've got some kind of thing that they want to express and some kind of new angle that they're bringing to the table. And we are gonna bring them all together uh, on th this one this one small stage on Hitbox, and we're gonna just try to do the best that we can with what we've got. And I, I'm very proud of what the best is that we've all got. We've, we're getting people fucking hired. I'm not allowed to swear. I'm sorry. But we're getting hey now, people that's hired. that's an infraction. We're getting people hired, like, in Twitter and on the chat room. And, like, that means so much to me. That means so much to the people here. That means so much to all of these uh, people who are like, hey, we need a writer. Hey, we need a game dev. Hey, we need a this, that, or the other. And... Th but most importantly, we're celebrating video games. Yeah. God, put me in the timeout box. You're, you're right. You're right. That was so we've actually sworn often, but that was like a emphatic one, which makes it more personable. Hey, the point is we're not swearing as much as we usually do. <laughs> we lowered it. We, we have hey, a code bloody, of conduct bloody. here. At I have not been okay. swearing. Okay. Don't be Austin. So I stooped to Austin's level, of course. Oh, poor Austin. Um, North. Uh, no, this is Craig. Hopefully by next year you'll have a portfolio ready to pimp yourself out and maybe even showcase something. Yeah. Heck yeah! Absolutely. We need more trailers. They clamor for more trailers. Um, I'm going to let I'm gonna let James go. He needs he's going to pass out, and then we won't have a stream anymore because he'll be passed out. Um, thank you guys. We will be back in what was it half an hour? Uh, an yes. hour. It was one hour, but then and you went over. It's, yeah, it's one. It's yeah, stop infringing on my break. <laughs> okay, I'll let you guys go because in an hour we're gonna start hyping the main event stuff all right all right roll the music and and we will go get some dinner <gasps> all right see you all around all right we'll be back in a little bit <laughs>